We've all heard that organ meats are nutritious, but which ones should we be eating? Do we need to be eating all of them to optimize health? In this video, we're gonna look at and compare beef liver, beef kidney, and beef heart, and talk about why you might want to include one or another in your diet. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. I've done a few other videos on my channel where I've compared the nutritional value of different foods. I've looked at beef liver versus lamb liver versus chicken liver. I've compared fish oil to cod liver and krill oil. And more recently, I've looked at the differences and similarities between butter and ghee. Today, we are going to be covering another popular request that I get, and that is what is the difference between beef liver, beef heart, and beef kidney? Now, before we begin, I just want to say that I know there is some debate over whether organ meats are necessary to include in our diet, especially in the context of a carnivore diet. Some people say yes, they are necessary. We need to be eating the entire animal in order to get the full nutrition that we need. But then on the other end of the spectrum, there are people who have been eating only muscle meat, only steak, for over five or 10 or even 15 years, and they are seemingly thriving. So is it even necessary to eat them? I'll give you my full opinion at the end of the video, but for now, let's just put it this way. They are more likely helping than hurting us. Before we begin, I just wanna let you know that I have released new merch on my website. This hoodie that I'm wearing is one of the pieces. The design has a little logo of butter on the front, and then on the back it says, butter is for steak, not bread. The one I'm wearing right now is the woman's cropped hoodie, but it also comes in a unisex full length hoodie, and then a unisex t-shirt as well, and there's various colors. The quality is really good. Everything is 100% cotton. And for today only, if you use the code Kate at checkout, you can save 10%. Head over to my website if you would like to check it out. So let's start with beef heart. In my humble opinion, heart is the best tasting out of all three of these organ meats. It has a similar taste to muscle meat, whereas I think liver and kidney have a more distinct flavor. Let's just put it that way. 100 grams of beef heart has 17 grams of protein, three grams of fat and less than one gram of carbohydrates. In terms of fat soluble vitamins, which are vitamins A, D, E, and K, heart has a bit, but I wouldn't say it is really a good source of any of these. It is a decent source of B vitamins, however, riboflavin especially, 100 grams gives you about 76% of your daily requirement. Niacin is almost 50% and B5 is almost 50% as well. And then vitamin B12, 100 grams of beef heart gives you 990% of your daily requirement. I talked about how important vitamin B12 is in my last video and how, especially people who are eating an omnivore or a carnivore diet, totally take it for granted. Most people don't even think about it. If you're eating meat or any type of animal food, you're probably getting enough. But if you are excluding animal foods, this is when you're gonna run into trouble. And yeah, it's just one of those things that most of us are getting enough of, we're getting a lot of it. But there are some people eating certain diets who are deficient in this. And as I talked about in my last video, it is critical for our health. And then vitamin C, there's 5,500 micrograms. Moving on to minerals and trace elements, sodium, potassium, magnesium, I mean, there's a little bit. There is 214 milligrams of phosphorus. Heart is packed with iron, 100 grams giving you 41% of your daily requirement. It is also a good source of zinc and copper. And even a 
decent source of iodine with 30 micrograms. And as is the case with all animal foods, it contains every single essential amino acid and it contains all of them in balanced amounts. And next, let's talk about beef kidney. Beef kidney is especially good for improving histamine intolerances as well as thyroid function. The macros for beef kidney are 16 grams of protein, three grams of fat, and less than one gram of carbohydrates per 100 grams. Looking at the fat soluble vitamins, it does contain a little bit of vitamin A, 33 micrograms, a bit of vitamin D and vitamin E, but nothing really noteworthy. Like heart, it is a decent source of all B vitamins, especially riboflavin. And then vitamin B12, if you thought heart was a good source, wait till you see kidney. There are 31 micrograms of vitamin B12 in 100 grams of kidney. There's also more vitamin C than in heart, coming in at 11 micrograms. Again, there are some electrolytes, but yeah, nothing really noteworthy. There is a decent amount of phosphorus as well. Where kidney really shines though is with iron. There's 9,500 micrograms in 100 grams of kidney. It is the best source of iron out of all three organs we're gonna talk about today. And while we've started talking about iron, I just wanted to pause for a moment and go a little bit deeper into it. Approximately 25% of people worldwide have an iron deficiency. There are 10 million people who are iron deficient in the United States, including 5 million who are anemic. So in general, getting more iron into our diets is going to be a good thing. However, it is possible to consume too much. On average, 20% of the iron from meat is absorbed by the body, but some people absorb more and some people less. Our genetics play a role in how well we absorb iron. Now, as women, we actually have a way to get rid of some of this iron every month. Men aren't so <laughs> lucky. So because of this, it's harder for women to have too much iron built up in the body. Whereas with men, it's, I don't wanna say easier, but it's just something to be mindful of. The good news is it is really easy to have your iron levels checked. And one simple solution, if you do find that your levels are high, is donating blood. Ultimately, I don't think it is something that we need to be overly concerned about. But then again, maybe this is a reason to not consume kidney every day. But then again, what we're talking about here is eating 100 grams of beef kidney. And if you are eating kidney, you're probably not eating 100 grams in a serve and you're definitely not eating it every single day. Moving on, kidney is also a good source of zinc and copper. And finally, we have beef liver. If there is only one organ meat you are going to consume, make it liver. 100 grams of liver has 20 grams of protein, four grams of fat, and five grams of carbs. And you might be wondering where do those carbs come from because five grams is pretty high as most meat and animal foods have next to none. The carbs come from the glycogen stores in the liver, the same way that we have glycogen stores in our livers. Now, if you're on any form of a low carb diet, five grams might seem like a lot as most people have a limit of 20 grams, but honestly, liver is just so great. And yeah, don't let five grams of carbohydrates discourage you from eating it. Looking at the fat soluble vitamins, liver has around 15,000 micrograms of vitamin A, it also has some vitamin D and some vitamin E, and then vitamin K2. Liver is one of the best sources of this vitamin. There isn't any vitamin K2 in kidney or heart, and there's only about 15 micrograms in a 100 gram steak. Outside of the foods that we're talking about today, eggs are also a really great source of this vitamin with about 48 micrograms per 100 grams, and then just look at all the B vitamins. I think that liver tops heart and kidney in basically all of them, even though heart and kidney were both good sources. 
and it's absolutely packed with vitamin B12. I'm pretty sure beef liver is actually the number one source of this vitamin out there. And then vitamin C, this is for everyone who thinks that you can't get vitamin C from meat. And as we look at the minerals, I just wanted to touch on calcium quickly because none of these organ meats we've talked about today contain any in a decent amount. Now, first off, I think the RDA for calcium is set a lot higher than it needs to be. And this is to make up for the lack of vitamin D3 and the lack of vitamin K2 that is in our diets. Both of these vitamins help ensure that calcium is absorbed by the body. If we're getting in enough calcium, but not enough K2 and D3, the calcium isn't going to be absorbed. So I think that the RDA for calcium is set higher in an attempt to make up for these other vitamins that we aren't getting enough of. That said, there is still next to no calcium in muscle meat and organs. The best sources are dairy and bones. And I think this is actually one of the best arguments for why we should consume dairy. It's high in not only calcium, but also vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. Aside from dairy, bone broth, eating fish that still has bones, so tin sardines or salmon, or even grinding up eggshells into a powder, these are all ways to get more calcium into your animal-based diet. The caveat with dairy is that if you have weight loss goals, it can be counterproductive. It is the one carnivore diet food that is easy to overconsume. So if you are looking to lose weight and are on a keto or carnivore diet, I do suggest cutting dairy out at least for a couple of weeks, especially if you've plateaued. Taking it out can make all the difference. Continuing on, iron, zinc, and especially copper are all really high in beef liver. And we didn't talk about omega-3s with heart and kidney because both only contained trace amounts of EPA and no DHA, but liver does have a little bit more, although it's still a very low amount. And that is the nutrition profiles of beef heart, beef kidney, and beef liver. Like I said earlier in this video, if you're going to consume one type of organ meat, make it liver. It doesn't have to be every day. It can be a couple times a week, just a small serve. I know one of the biggest cons of liver for a lot of people is the taste, and I totally agree with you. Not a fan, but there are ways to hide it in with other food. Grassland Nutrition is a company that makes a beef liver powder. The flavor on this is really, really mild. You can mix just a teaspoon of it in with ground beef or other meat, and I'm telling you, you cannot even taste it. Some other good things about it is in comparison to liver, which you have to worry about it going off in your fridge, this has a shelf life of several years. You're getting all the benefits of eating raw liver without actually eating raw liver and having to deal with the texture and the taste. Now, if you do wanna check out Grassland Nutrition, I will link them down below. And I also have a code for 10% off. But anyways, I am going to wrap this video up here. Let me know in the comments down below, do you consume organ meats? Do you think they're necessary on a carnivore diet specifically? Let me know down below. Thanks again guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.